No, die. I thought I, I just put these on my pizza. Die. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Sumac. Sumac. And this here is Frank the Tank. And um, it's a great day in the neighborhood. <laughs> as you can see. You remind me of somebody. I um, At our school, we had our halloween parade today why it wasn't on monday who knows or or tomorrow on saturday oh right yeah but um (laughs) so we had the halloween parade today and i was being mr rogers you were mr fred rogers from the neighborhood mr fred rogers from the he's just a guy in the neighborhood he is (laughs) mr rogers neighborhood one of one of our our favorites um you know, obviously none of the kids knew who I was. They didn't. The two-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. They they were, were, unfortunately have not seen much of of old Fred Rogers. All their parents and teachers did know what it was. Travesty. And like did a lot. And it's also very comfortable. I mean, I know why he wore it. Ooh, I got my. Yeah. You can't see, but I got my my blue shoes on like he used to wear. Did you change into it when you got there? Yeah, I just kept taking my shoes on and off. To just keep getting that look of me putting yeah, my shoes on. Yeah, because it teaches them how to tie their shoes. Oh, uh, yeah, these kids don't. You know, I've, I, I teach real young kids. And I know, they I don't know. know how to tie their shoes yet. Yeah. And so I, to, I, I'm i on shoe, putting on shoe duty. Oh, okay. And, shoe um, patrol. Shoe patrol. And um, I always get a little frustrated when the kids have lace shoes. Hmm. I, I'm all for lace shoes, you know, maybe around five or five-ish, six. When it's like, even if they can't yet, right? the idea is these are the shoes you're going to learn on. But Velcro was invented in our lifetime. In our lifetime. Or there's <laughs> even like the elastic, like stretchy. Yeah. So they look the like The elastic, shoes. yeah. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, and it's not just as a cranky teacher, because as we know, cranky coworker day was yesterday. Right. So we're no longer cranky teachers. My thing is even just, I think anytime I'm putting on shoes and I'm untying them and tying them, I'm thinking about the parent. Like, why would you buy this kid who will not, in these size shoes, learn how to tie you're shoes? right. Set yourself up to have to tie your shoes every day. Right. No, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Well, maybe they just didn't see any good Velcro ones or whatever. Yeah, and you know, maybe, maybe Parents they Parents like fashion for little kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fashionista for uh, for the kids. Yeah. I, I think kids should be wearing kids' clothes. You have all life to wear adult clothes. And then the latter half of your yeah. life, cardigans and People find and dress it shirts. so, so cute. T- to make a little man mas- masquerade a child as yeah. an adult even even by having them repeat things that are you know adult you know yeah. like um mondays am i right you know if, if a three or four year old says that people go bonkers people go bonkers yeah Let's, uh make kids kids again yeah that's what i say you put them put them in, in their in their little toe toe toey shoes i don't know t- soft there's little soft shoes Put them in. A, in a, I I had my kids barefoot for it was you know if the weather would allow I had my kids barefoot a lot because I thought grounding it, yeah and also like if you're trying to learn how to walk on this planet your I feet were felt, made for walking <laughs> yeah I felt that and that's just what they'll do they could grip and balance better yeah and uh, to this day I, I I found myself with better balance than most people all because I started off shoeless. But um yeah, so it was a good day. All, all the kids, you know, loved it. Um, you know, a lot of cute costumes. Really? Anything worth telling about? Um, no, nothing. Nothing like um, how do you say, unique? But mm. just like some of these costumes that are like, they're just kind of like in this little ball of oh of, my of gosh, like fluff being like a snowball or something. Yeah, I saw um, a baby was was he? I don't even think he was a spider. I think he was just the spider web. But like they had made this like box over his stroller <laughs> and then made the web and like the baby was in like literally it looked like he was floating because yeah. they made everything white even what he was wearing. Uh, and it was just really funny. Yeah. Not funny. Uh, it was interesting. Creative. I love Halloween. Um, I, I, I love like thinking of costumes, costume idea. I'm an advocate for either DIY or like doing it, doing it the real way. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, people do like this. The the story about costumes. Costumes. That's great mm-hmm. and fun. But I don't know. I would prefer like. And I don't mean to say like you need to buy actual cashmere if you're gonna be Fred Rogers. But I would rather like a not as done well like yeah 
It's kind of like how people think with gifts or something. Like, right. Uh, make me something rather than give me a gift card. It's just right, a, right. It's sort of like that extra little bit of thought. But not every people, not everyone has time, and that's okay too. Yep. So that's what uh, Spirit Halloween is for. Oh boy, those those they just pop up. They pop pop they, up they shops. Pop up out of nowhere, and then they disappear. Yeah. So um, obviously, uh, we are going into Halloween weekend. It is Friday. We won't see you guys on actual Halloween, which I think will be the first year. Sorry, third. Oh ha- my gosh. Yeah. I would have dressed up. Oh, it's all right. I thought it was I thought Thursday. You were dressed up. <laughs> I'm a blueberry. <laughs> I thought it was Thursday. No, today's Friday. I didn't know that. Yeah, today's Friday. Um, you know, because yesterday was Thursday. We just don't walk through. Thursday. I, I all I knew, all I know that it's um, it's Wild Foods Day. Wild foods. Wild foods. How wild can food get? What? Like when you say wild foods, are you saying like foods that grow in the wild, not like a chicken nugget? Well, chickens grow in the wild. Um, a chicken is not a chicken nugget, by the way. Well, that's where it comes from. Oh, so you're, uh, you're talking about like uh, berries, what, like the Peloton or not Peloton diet, <laughs> the, the pal- paleo diet, where it's like I don't know if the cavemen could eat it, then I'm gonna eat it too, like natural grains and harvested mm-hmm. rice and that stuff. No, I don't even think you can do that, right? Because I don't know, but yeah, maybe wild rice is called okay, wild. I, I see what you're saying. You're saying. Nothing that was like flour is milled. Yes. You're saying you go out, you pick up, uh, uh, you you yeah. pick you pick an apple off of a tree, right? And you eat it. Fruits and and not even plant, not even like planted trees. You're saying like it needs to be like you're wandering through the forest and you stumble upon. I think so. Okay. Um. There's a like there's, mushrooms would be mushrooms, a wild, wild food. Wild food. Yeah. Okay. Um. There's a uh Instagram account. I've told you about it before. It's called Philly Orchards, I think, because um, these people got together, and I, I think it's like very a volunteer situation. Yeah. And um, knowledge is power. <laughs> knowledge is power, and wild foods. We've lost our knowledge of wild foods, just like we've we've. I don't know if we've lost. But we've never had the confidence to read the Bible um, without someone telling us what it means. We don't have the confidence to eat wild food without someone. And I'm including myself in this. I don't feel confident. Um, well, time out mm-hmm. on the play. Mm-hmm. I was watching a, uh, there's a word, something ologist about wild foods. Okay. And they say, doesn't matter the books you read or something. If you don't know, it was something about wild berries. And it's like, don't read books and say, <laughs> this is it. Like, unless you're with an expert. Or become an know. expert. I don't know. I think that might be propaganda. Please don't die. Well, that's what Please I'm don't eat and that, die. That, that, that's what they say. They're okay. like, uh, back in the day, the, the way you found out which wild foods are you can eat or not is because uh, old Freddy, don't you remember Freddy for, died I, from I, eating I, those berries? But I'm going to say that I still think that we've lost the confidence to eat even a crab apple, to eat, um, you know, so, so this place... Uh, Philly Orchards is is just for wild trees that grow in our wild parks or the side of the street. They you go and if you're part of this organ that you do learn, you do learn what kind of berries um yeah. or what kind of leaves or whatever. I am not saying do trial and error, but but like to learn. To learn and then yeah. and then you can eat. But but I think even once you learn, because of what you just said, people are are deathly afraid of wild food. And and I think they should not be. I'm going to disagree. There I, is, there is an, uh, another, there's a website that, that, that was an Instagram, but there's a website and it's called something like, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's like, it's like Wild Foods PA in New Jersey or something because we're neighboring states. And this is a website. I was, um, I was looking up Sumac. I think we even have a Sumac street um, in Philadelphia, but Sumac, Wild Sumac. And I'm sure you've heard of Poison Sumac. If, whenever you hear Poison yeah. Ivy, you also hear Poison Sumac. Poison sumac has dangling um, fruit, mm-hmm. and the sumac that you can eat, it's very, very noticeable. It's um, it's actually called staghorn because you know the um, deer horns yeah. are furry, like uh, have, yeah, velvet. Yeah, it's these very noticeable, um, beautiful pink flowers that grow. They're so different from than the poison sumac. Okay, and with this sumac, you can make sumacade, like lemonade, but it's sumac. And is um, I don't know. 
it's a website and she, I think it's a woman or whoever, they teach you about wild foods. And today is wild food day and you're telling everybody that it's too dangerous. I am. I'm, and I'm going to stand by. I'm going to protect you guys while you try to. I am all for education and learning <clears throat> and getting inv- into it and like, learn about, oh, that tree I walked by the park, that's actually a, what and what berry sure you're allowed to eat those berries. Yeah. I'm against just, why not? Uh, no one said why not you said you kind of said why not i said learn once you learn it yeah but you said like you said even if you don't (laughs) i didn't you did my thing i'm very afraid of things yeah it's like food safety and stuff like like uh some things aren't even worth getting sick for one day over and so i i'm i'm cautious of where i buy food yeah well which which uh which food truck i'd go to let alone the wild well, th- it, this where there's is, no FDA safety. This is the thing. In the old days, you know, people there were medicine men or women, medicine practitioners who who knew which herbs or leaves to make a tea, a root. I'm not against the wild foods. I'm against the ignorant I- ignorance or naivete. And there's no room for error. There's not. There is room for error, but not it's with like mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going on a wild trip. No, die. I thought I, I just put these on my pizza. Die. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Isolate that um, sound bite. Die. Die. <laughs> die. Um, I am not against. No, I, I'm not. I'm not being a, a, a scarist, uh, an afraidist. That's like, oh, be careful. You're, you're going to die. If you took. My thing is some things aren't worth miles less than that. Okay. You might just get. You might you might just have a tummy ache after it. Yeah, is that worth it? Is that wor- wor- worth no. pick, picking the the random berry? No, and, and, and well, having your no, you, I don't know. Ha- ha- having a, a pit in your stomach or heaven forbid, just throwing up. You know what I mean? You're like, not doing anything for Wild Food Day. You you you're literally making it anti Wild Food I am. Day. You know what? Why why do we, we always talk about like walking a path of our own? Yeah, and yet so day to day, would you drink milk from the cow? No, because you know what? You know what uh, but it's supposed to be drank that way. What? But it, is milk supposed to be drank? I yeah. Uh, that's a whole other discussion in uh, itself. Uh, I'm an almond that. milk guy myself. You know. Well, you but know, Fred Rogers. He was a vegetarian. Was he? He was, and you know what he oh, said? Fred, what? He said, "I I won't eat anything that has a mother." In a time when that was not popular. No. You know what else I liked about him? He really cared about fitness. So there's some, really? Yeah, he worked out every single day. Really? Yeah, he um. The one thing though is he was a little bit weight crazy. Oh. And I think that like could have been looked into a bit because okay. I think he was chubby as a child. Okay. And um, every day he would wake up. I think his morning routine was he would swim a bunch of like a lap for like an hour and uh. get out and do a Bible study then start his day. Okay. Which is great. Yeah. Uh, he, it, it was it was fitness. It was it was meditation. Veg- cared about a vegetarian diet diet he was pretty like routine based strict on that it made for the rest of his day to be easy the one thing would be the weight thing every day he uh it said that he'd look at the scale and it would say 143 oh. and he'd say that's a good number but like he'd make sure it stayed at 143 oh wow Posi- that's interesting the positive spin is he had this like own numerology love for the number 143 oh because 143 i love you oh and so that's fred that's sweet, right? Like, cause yeah. it, it just it came up in his life. He liked one forty three. My thing, just like tinge of, of looking at, is were you a little weight obs- like weight too weight conscious? Yeah. But everyone has their thing, and sometimes you, it, it takes these these little personal routines, whether it is weight or it's just mm-hmm. whatever, to keep every day being. I mean, yeah, I heard um, structure is really really good for mental health, yeah. and that's interesting to me because. I uh, I'm more from a time that was very structured. It, it had been very structured, and then we moved into a wave of think outside the box. You don't have to do it that way. Don't be controlled. And I and I wondering now where we are having a spike in mental illness. Um, in no way that it was caused by that, and I'm sure there's a million other reasons. But I'm just saying, uh, I'm wondering if adding along with all the mental health help that's available now if people would kind of embrace a bit of a routine or structure if it would help i have the answer for you oh um fred (laughs) i have the answer for you the thing is we talk about what you're saying a lot Uh and we 
there is the one side of the what we're coming from and we do want to get like this force structure um i'm going to compare it to religion you know this happened with you're going to be religious you're going to be religious oh, right 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 two way you can do what you want oh yeah you're right and then you find a lot of people with a loss of faith and it's like mm-hmm. oh we have never been out of more of a sodom and gomorrah time i think the it's like forcing lent on someone right we always mm-hmm. talk we always go back to this lent it's yeah like, lent only means anything if you're the one doing it well i wouldn't force it on someone else i meant should you force yourself yeah that you the time you're coming from with this there was a structure that wasn't structure that people were doing on themselves right it was pressured structure yes and self-structure is fred rogers had no one telling him to do what he, he right. was doing it was he had this self-structure that he wouldn't tell anyone we found this out after the fact mm-hmm. and then he would go around first of all advocate of mental health talk about it before mental was health. he that's all that, that's, that's all awesome. he talked about oh, it was like well. was childhood mental health and, and talking about your feelings and like Aww. Grow men crying and stuff, all, all that. Great, 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 great guy. Not my point. <laughs> so with churches, same thing. We are we are sort of against that forced church. That even like the fact that you even have to go to church to be replaced with, which often is harder. But that's where you really get the rewarding thing. Structure, um, force structure. It's easy to do because you're forced to do it. It's not. It doesn't really get a reward. Yeah. No structure. Easy to do, <laughs> you know. Self structure, hard to do, great reward. Church, easy. When you're forced to go to church every Sunday, it's easy to do, but you're not listening to a thing the priest says. Right. No church, you get the freedom, but then it takes the hard work of building your own spirituality. Yeah. And that's what becomes rewarding. So balance. So yeah. So now we are in a time where we are less structured, which is I think a beautiful thing. For then, you know, like I, I was talking about fred rogers weight consciousness yeah if he forced someone to do that they would hate it yeah my thing might be i, I read 100 pages out of a book for the first hour in the morning every day right someone else would hate that yeah but it's like everyone needs to find their thing to then be structured and work hard at that right self-structure we got to get into it because we're we are just we're chit-chatting that's what fred rogers would always go on tangents helping people out really how do you know so much how do I know so much about the goat? Yeah. On my research. I research everyone I was for Halloween. Okay. Um, today is a long awaited Dr. Seuss Friday. By long awaited, I mean we do it every Friday, except for the last two weeks. I'll come clean. Was it two weeks? It was two weeks. Okay. We've been trying to do the same book for the past two weeks and we've been stumped. It's Dr. Seuss Friday. Let me explain to you what it is first. Dr. Seuss Friday is the day we read a Dr. Seuss book. Fred Rogers and is up there in our in our hierarchy list of just normal people. Uh, Theodore. Theodore Geisel is right next to him, Dr. Seuss, sort of for the same reason. They spoke to children, not because it's an easy... Oh, children, who cares? But because they, they know that children are the ones with their ears open. Right. And they are they can perceive. And you start early with these concepts of good values, love to one another. Creativity. Creativity. And kindness. Kindness. And- and so, Dr. Seuss, you might think they're children's books. Why are we talking about them? We think that you can go back as adults and still get the message that are in between the lines yeah. of these crazy characters and these wacky rhymes. And so, it's just a, it's a nice little practice for us to see the deeper picture of yeah. And it, practice is a great word. It really, it really, um, you know, you do Sudoku or whatever to exercise your mind. This really exercises our mind. Yeah, and uh, you can make the comparison to then you can go to the Bible. You know, a step up and do the same thing. Right. Uh, read a Bible story and get something out of it. So the book w- we have been trying to read is The 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. Yep. All right. Why have we been stumped? Because it's one of Dr. Seuss's earliest books. 1938. Yes. Before the, the short books of the clever rhymes and the fun characters. This is a storybook. Right. This is This is no rhymes, a long form story. Sort of opposite of what we say about Dr. Seuss, which is digestible for children. Didn't even know they got a message. Right. This, would, uh, this might go over a kid's head. Right. So we read it off camera. Yeah, because it it would have been too long for like people's attention span on here. Yeah, so, so after the fact, we can sort of talk about... Right. Is there a reason then why he switched over uh, from this to these more short form? Right. Even, and I read this and it could have been an easy read for... 
uh, you know, 15, 16 you know, year old where it's like yeah. you get to an age of, of a, a literate reader. Is there a reason he was like, I need to dial it back because this isn't the message you can get across. I need to get the message across easier. Yeah. Anyway, we are just going to give a brief overview. It was it was nominated for um, an Academy Award. Yes. Also, I wanted to talk about the dedication. Yeah. Yeah. OK, we'll talk about that after. After. OK. All right. So we have Bartholomew Cubbins. Um and his hat. He had, he had a hat from his father with a feather on it, a poor a poor man's hat. But he loved it. It was, it was valuable to him. And there was this great king who sat atop of a mountain. Okay. Sat atop of a mountain, could see everything he owned. Everything. All all the, the houses and the, and the the valleys and stuff. Then Bartholomew Cubbins, he lives on the very bottom of it. Right. He looks up. To, it, it says they have opposite views. And so... One day, he's going into town with his hat. It's the only thing he has to his name. And he starts hearing, clear the way, clear the way. The king's rolling through, telling everyone to take off your hats. Take off your hats, everyone. The king's coming through. Right. And so all of a sudden, all all of a sudden, (laughs) you have your own hat on. Um, (laughs) All of a sudden, the king stops, looks right at Bartholomew, says, "Bring, bring this chariot back. Rewinds says Bartholomew, why have you? Or he didn't know his name. Uh, would he not take your hat off for the king? Bartholomew said, "Well, of course I take off my hat for the king." He was holding it. He was holding. It. He was like, "Look, my hat." And he's like, "Very funny." There's another hat on Bartholomew's head. Takes it off again. There's another hat there. Yeah. Takes it off. Takes it off. The king's getting mad. So this will be the whole line of the book where this boy, because he's a boy, wow. is trying to take off a hat. And every single time he takes it off, it's replaced with the same exact hat. And the hat doesn't disappear. Like, you know, he, he can see. So it's it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. yeah the, hats, the hats are there. And so they say, arrest him. They go up to the castle. He gets brought in front of the king. What kind of nonsense is there? There's a scribe there who's counting all the hats that are being. Right. 17 hats that have been taken off. Um, tries to take it off. He starts calling people in. He okay. calls in. The king. The king does. The, the, the king calls in the the hat man, M- M- Mr. Hat Jack, Jack the Hatter. Oh, yeah. I remember. Hat guy. The milliner. Comes in. He's like, that little thing, that little hat. Yeah, I'll take it off. Takes it off with another hat there. He runs out. Freaked. Spooked. He brings in his three wise men. I thought this was pretty interesting. The yeah. wise men didn't even touch it. They looked at it. And they said, I'm not doing it. It was like the old, older, oldest, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they didn't even try. No. they well, said. Did they say it can't be done? Yeah, well, the first yeah. one said it can't be done. The oldest just looked at it. Okay. And then walked out. I thought, well, we'll harken back to that. Okay. And then he brought in, um, he brought in the... You have a good memory. I read it, but thing. I can't... He brought in, uh, so, no, wait, who, who said it was black magic? Uh, the nephew, maybe? No, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when uh, the little kid okay, showed yeah. up. <laughs> so then there's this, the nephew. Nephew's nasty. The nephew's Mean like, little rich boy. Yeah, the nephew's like, I'll mm-hmm. take it off. Send him outside. Mm-hmm. Shoots an arrow at it, and I like how Bartholomew was like, "My my dad's arrow, my dad's bow is bigger than." I that. know. I was I'm like, "Don't afraid. give him any ideas." <laughs> Bing, shooting hats off of his head. Yeah, not working. A big man archer. The human <laughs> bowman. A human bowman. Pew. Goes swishes off his hat. There's another hat there. Yeah. The bowman says, "This is black magic." Okay. The king's like, that makes sense. Yeah. It's black magic. It's Halloween. It's spooky season. It's Halloween. <laughs> it's spooky season. So he brings in his uh, magic men. They come mm-hmm. enchanting. Right. And all of this is fun. It, you, like, you know, if it were to be read to a child in increments, I guess, you know, there is, that's a little chant. And, you know, like it, it is, I, there it's was, not dry. There, there was some rhyming parts where I'm yeah. like, so he had it in him. He was he starting, just, right? He didn't do it yet. Yeah. So it wasn't, it's not dry. It's long, So they, it's not dry. they do a spell, a, a chant, and they're like, oogly boogly, make this hat go away. Um, the king's like, well, the hat's still there. And they're like, it'll take 10 years to come off. But don't, don't worry, king. Right. He's like, get out of here. Yeah. Um, then I think that was it. He was like, all right. Think- and he's sort of like, he is sort of a reluctant king, isn't he? Yeah. Like the biblical kings of like... Like, he wasn't so into punishing this kid, but it was like, I guess we have to. Yeah, but that's the, the role. The nephew was. The nephew was mean spirited. So, so yeah. The nephew came around and was like, just cut his head off. Yeah. Cut that's... this man's head off. Yeah. And the king's like, uh, you know what? I don't really want to, but you know what? That, that'll, that'll get it done. Right. Sends him down to the, uh, the axe man. Yeah. Executioner. Executioner. Yeah. 
is like, I don't want to cut your head off. You yeah, like also a nice, a nice character in the book. Because yeah. when I first read that, I thought, this is super dark for a child. Yeah. But he was like a nice guy. He was like, <laughs> and even, even Bartholomew was pretty down. I know. He was like, well, he said you got to cut my head off. So Yeah, like it, I guess at that like, time. Just, he said, can you just do it quick? I guess at that time, it was 1938, that maybe the children and parent weren't so, they could see the difference between um, fantasy and reality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like, no, this is too. This is terrible. It's like it's fantasy. Yeah, fantasy land. And so the executioner was like, "All right, well, I mean, I guess I have to, even though you seem nice." So like, I just need you to take your hat off. Right. Thelma was like, "I can't." That's whole, sort of the problem. That's the rule. Executioner said, um, "Well, technically, we can't cut heads off without the hat on." Yeah. With with a hat on. And he's like, "All right, like, go back upstairs." No, I think he tried to take him off, didn't it? What? He tried to take the ha- more hats off there. Well, yeah. Well, he yeah. was just taking hats. And so all whole, through the book. The whole time. Yeah. That's what, it goes up to 500 hats that have yeah. been taken off. And um, they go upstairs. He's like, I ah, couldn't get my hat off. Can't kill people with hats on. Yeah. The, pre- the, the king's like, yeah, you're kind of right. Uh, nephew comes back and says, let's just get this over with. Bring, um, let me take him to the top of the uh, the castle and I'll, push, yeah. and I'll push him off. The king's like, that sounds kind of uh, extreme, but. At this point, we're, we're in too deep. We yeah. got to get rid of this guy. Yeah. Starts walking up the ha- the stairs. He's getting a little worried. So he's just throwing hats off. Like, please be the last one. Yeah. Bartholomew. As- You're saying he. We have three he's at this point. Bartholomew. And it's not clear. There's the king, the nephew, and Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Bartholomew's trying to pull the hats off as he goes up thinking a last hope of yeah. if I can get if I can get it to stop, yeah. I can save my life. So something strange happens as he's getting to the top. The hats are the hats have always been the same this entire time. Right. Little hat with a feather. Just replica. The hats are changing. Yeah. They're getting bigger and nicer. Right. And up until they get to the very top and it is a hat described as the greatest hat it has a pearl on it that yeah. is worth more than anything. Like the first hat had one feather. This had like multiple. Yeah, and, the and best feathers, like the best peacock or whatever. Yeah, and it had, it had a jewel that was like worth more than anything the king had. Right. This angered the nephew. The nephew said it made the nephew more mad than even the first hat. It was okay. I, the king was like, whoa, that's an expensive. That's a nice hat. Yeah. He said, stop right there. The nephew said, I'm just going to push him anyway. The nephew, the king says, you need to learn a lesson. Threw him over his there knee. There was suspense. There, there was it, a, it wasn't predictable. Threw him over his knee. He gave him a spank. I don't remember that. You don't? Yeah, he spanked him and said, you need to start listening to your elders. I knew he saved Bartholomew, but I didn't remember that. Then he's like, hey, Bartholomew, let me buy the hat off you for 500. Bartholomew too. Well, what's his name runs up? The counter. The yeah. man who had been counting the whole time. He says, um... You know, 498, 499, 500. 500 the, hat. Yeah. It's the nicest hat. The king's like, hey, um, let me buy it off you for 500. I thought him, he's like, yeah, done, deal. Like, let me out of here. Yeah. Gives him the hat. King puts it on. Happy as a clam. No other hat showed up. Yeah. Bartholomew, Do you have the book? I see it. Yeah. The king, the king goes down a happy man. Bartholomew walks home. $500 yeah. richer with a smile on his face. No hat on his head. Right. Um, did you want to look something up before? Yeah. Um, I was just one because I remember the part where he's, what was this? Where the microphone's on my way. Um, look, your majesty, look, he shouted to the king. Oh, I see. Who was, who was saying that? It was Bartholomew. Yeah. Okay. So Bartholomew's saying, look at my head. It's bare. Yeah. And, but the king says, no, you look at me. Look at, right? Is that what he's saying? And he put the hat right over his crown. Oh. I just remember that. It, like, I remember that standing out to me that the little boy was like, look, this is what you wanted. I- I'm hatless. And then the king like totally forgot about that. And he was like, no, look at this. And he put the 500th most beautifulest hat completely covered his crown. Okay. Interesting. Well, we don't have a lot of time left. So basically that was a long form story, but. I found a comparison to it that I'll just sort of get into what I think. I want to compare the hat to a person of God or spirituality. Um, And I'm I'm just going to cite examples, but you can choose to read the book on your own and think what you think. The reason, a couple of reasons why I think this is um, it was given to him by his father. He wore it proudly. Right. But it didn't really have any intrinsic value, uh, monetary value. No. Right. Um. It was the only thing he had, you know, and he goes through the, the town, take your hats off for the king. 
he can't take the hat off for the king. You know, one thing we know about God is it's you know the, the king of kings. Right. Is what we call Jesus. And it's this idea that you can't, you can't have any earthly power be stronger than spirituality or get rid of it. You can, you can say, oh yeah, I, oh, I don't, I, right. I'm, not, I'm not a Christian. Take this off, take it off. It doesn't take that spirituality out of you. Any earthly things, that's an right. inside thing. No matter how hard they try. Um, couple, they go to the, the castle, it gets this king mad because it's like, you have something that you're, you're not listening to me. You're, this hat is, is, but it's also almost like it wasn't his choice. It's yeah, the hat. The right. I, I can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about God. A couple of the people I found notable was, um, they brought in the three wise men. We talked about it earlier, but the three wise men, literally that's what they call in the book in the Bible. The king was mad and said to the three wise men, what is this? Right. And they looked at it and what? They knew exactly what it was. Right. And they didn't listen to the king. You're right. In this book, they knew they, they, they saw the hats, unlike the other people who took them off and said, I don't know what's going on. They looked at it and said, We gotta go. Right. We're not doing anything about it. Right. Interesting. Then he brought in the um the nephew. I think the nephew is the main antagonist in the story, mm-hmm. who just didn't like him. Like he w- wanted to get rid of Maybe that. Maybe he's the devil. Not even the devil, just like sort of the like, devilish. Yeah, you know these people in the Bible. They, yeah, they just want to, like they want to take down. Yeah, religion. They, they see it as bad and interfering. He he wasn't. He shouldn't have been involved. Yeah, but he was interfering. And um, then you have the the black magic people. Yeah, who in the Old Testament you see this a lot, where you see in a lot of um, what was this? Who were the um, the the prophets that spoke to the kings? A lot of times they would have these seers they would something. have these like soothsayers or, or seers come to them and like uh talk about their dreams. Yeah. A bunch of nonsense. And it's like as long as there wasn't a person who could really do it, they believed them. Right. But then when, you know, like whoever it was, whether Joseph. Daniel or something yeah. or Joseph, and he would send his these these soothsayers out and would say, Get out. Right. You have just been and the whole ten year thing. Hark, that kind of reminded me of Bought that. What time, yeah. Then Executioner, it was sort of like you can't, I can't kill you, have a hat on. There's like this idea that like. Death, can you can't be killed by physical death. Like, yeah, which, it, it, exactly. Course. It's like you can't kill the, the soul. Right. And, and if this hat, like, so you, well, I can't kill you with a hat on. And finally, to get to the end, um, they're going up. The, the the hats start transforming into something nicer. And I think this can be seen, my personal take on it was the king was seeing the power in the hat oh. more than the hat actually changing. Oh, beautiful. Right? Because yeah. it, it, beca- it became something that the last hat was something bigger than the king had at all. You're right. And so he saw the power of what was once just a hat and a feather you know when jesus was walking around right he's just some random guy until people saw the power of right. him, and then they said they need to follow him that brings back the nephew who in that same line says seeing the biggest hat angered him more yeah and, and you have that sort of in spirituality and in the bible of like there was these people that like the more you showed them the power the more right. angered them. but the king didn't see it that way he saw the value in it it's like stop like i want that I, I think he it was in a way he found religion and he found he found that the power of this hat, this spirituality, was bigger than anything he owned in the kingdom. Yeah. To <clears> your <throat> point of what did he do? He placed it right over his crown. Right. It was more important. It was he covered more, it, yeah. it was bigger th- in the beginning, he was power more powerful than anything, so over the entire town. In the end, he's putting this thing above the crown. If you think of it spirituality, like yeah. it's, it's bigger than all that. Right. And then and then the boy, Bartholomew, he he was still, um, you know, more um, able to see more than the king that he didn't even need a hat, you yes. know, because he would still have his spirituality. But yes. if the king needed that at that time. Exactly. It's sort of like this like early point of, of spirituality where, yeah, at the end, so he, he then doesn't have a hat, but nothing about that spirituality changes. Mm-mm. And then sort of like it, if you had a continuation I, uh, of this book, you know, if, if I continued it, there would be a certain sense of it never really was about the hat. Right. It was about what it represented. Right. So Bartholomew, and so, I mean, even with this guy's hat, it's like you see it in some, like, in some churches where it's like the values on the be- most beautiful. Well, yeah. 
I Gothic mean, cathedral. Because remember, he even he kept all the the king kept all the hats in a glass yeah. case, which is kind of missing the point still. And, yeah, so you, but you, you kind of can compare it to like it's a real thinker. These these beautiful cathedrals and yeah, it's like they they have. Look at the they beauty. have people under glass. Yeah, when really it's about what those represent. We yeah. talked about it in, about Jerusalem in an earlier podcast, but um. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we're going way over the time. The time. Just the the dedication is. To, and we'll talk about it some other time, but it's to his imaginary daughter. Him and his wife didn't have children, so they had fun by referring to an imaginary daughter called Chrysanthemum Pearl. Yeah. So um, obviously we went way over time, but that's sort of the the point of this book. Um. It was ve- like it, it kind was of, challenging. It goes to show his power as a writer. Yeah, you know, you, you see an artist where like, uh, like I think Picasso would, would be a good example of this, where it's like they have all the skill. Yeah, to to be like a Michelangelo, super like, hyper realism, right. and then they use that art, and then then they go small. Right, and then there's like you can put the the power or, or chefs. Yeah, right. You have you have small time chefs that can make a huge pot for a huge thing for a family. Right. But then you have the best chefs that they can do that. So then they're like, how much can I make in this right. one little dish? Of the books from the, so I, I, the 50s I think it's, a, it's a beautiful arc of Dr. Seuss. Maybe in a later podcast, we'll talk about the transition yeah. into now let's go into short form books, books, but still get the message across. That is our podcast. Have a good Halloween weekend. Be safe. Be spooky. Be Seuss. Susie. Be Susie. <laughs> Um, Sumaki. See you on Wednesday. Peace. Happy Halloween.